Yeah, what's good, YouTube? Um, I had a guy on one of my last videos ask me about my M52 technical update because this is a 2.8 um, and how I put an M50 intake on it. So this is going to be a very short but in-depth review on how I got this intake onto... Yeah, M52 or M54, because the same thing. I got M54 ignition coils. And I got an M54 head somewhere. Um, but pretty much, if you have an M52 or M54 dual vanos, uh, you're going to have either M52 or M54 intake. And these intakes are so thick and cumbersome. And the throttle body's all down there. And there's all these vacuum lines and shit that you gotta like look out for. Uh, if you wanna pass inspection and have your emissions working, this is 100% fine. Don't touch this. If you're like me and you're like a fake race car driver and you want all the power and no torque below 3000 RPM, yeah, go right ahead. Uh, but long story short, let me just try to. Yeah, I mean, you, nobody saw that. I mean, yeah, let's just put that right back. Um, there's two very important things I want you guys to understand. One, do you see that? On the M52 TUs, or just any dual vanos type shit, there are these ports that the CCV valve uses to recirculate oil back into the intake. There is a kit on Seam Legit Garage that I will link below. And if I can't find it, just look it up. Um, M50 Vanos or M50 Intake. Just look it up on Seam Legit Garage. You're going to get like these little things. There's these little studs. Um, I happen to find them on, on Home Depot. But I'm not going to try to kill Seam Legit Garage Hustle because I bought it from them first. And the ones that I bought from them work great. They work excellent. The ones I bought from Home Depot, they were a little, a little harder to put in, but they did the same job. Either way, you gotta plug those holes first. Second, I don't know if you see that zigzag pattern of the, the bolts. So it's like one, one up, one down, one up, one down. Um, Long story short, on the M52 TU, technical vanos, technical vanos, technical update, there are some spots where you have two bolts. Let me see if I can get up in there. Yep. So to put on the M50 intake, you're going to have to remove, yeah, see, so it's one, that's a bottom bolt, and then that's a bottom and top bolt. You're going to have to remove the bottom bolt so it can do that that zigzag cross pattern of one like top bottom top bottom top bottom top bottom yeah i think so it's like eight of them oh, wait no 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 like ten or so but either way it's gonna be a zigzag like a zipper like one two three four m50 intake has one and then one two and then one 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 two it's stupid but long story short if you got a vice grip and some duct tape just rack the duct tape around the, the intake bolts the ones that usually go right here there's going to be one at the top you just pull that one out so it doesn't interfere with the intake slide it on you're good to go and i have 90 percent of the work done right there you got the you got the holes plugged for the ccv the oil the crankcase recirculation valve and uh intake so my third step after that and one of the most difficult was um yeah modifying the fuel rail now to get my fuel rail on i don't know if you could see because it's a little i had to cut these are the same you can see there's these little mounting stands right there one and two they mount 
they hard mount the fuel rail onto the intake, like the physical intake, so you can't take it off, it can't go anywhere. Um, so you have to, I had to take an angle grinder and very carefully uh, erase those and just delete those and they're not there anymore. Um, and the second thing would be my intake, my intake, my injector wiring right here. I had to open this up and flip the injectors clips 90 degrees. So they're facing this way and literally take them and flip them 180 degrees upside down because my injectors, you'll see these enter the injectors on the right and the M50 intake, the injectors come in on the left. So if that was the same orientation, then I wouldn't be able to install them because they're all upside down. So, and as you can see, um, whatever wires that came out of there, I just, yeah, modified the, when I say modify, I didn't cut anything. I didn't do anything. All I did was Pull the harness out of this little holder here. Um, turn the injector clips 180 degrees so they can clip into the actual injectors. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they can clip into the actual injectors. And I'm trying to remember what else. Oh, that little bracket there, I got that from Seems, Le Seems Legit Garage where they came in clutch and saved my ass with a bunch of these things. Um, I think the hardest thing for you as a beginner would be learning how to route all the vacuum lines. Um, this was one of my first times, so it was actually pretty, I don't want to say hard, because nothing is hard if you put your mind to it. But pretty much all I want to show you is I have a T connector somewhere. Um, you're gonna have to T because you're not gonna be running the crankcase recirculation valve. So you're gonna get a plug over here. See, that's a little cap. So, this, I think, no, that's a secondary air pump, but it runs to the crankcase recirculation valve. Allow me to show you on the stock car. Yeah, this thing right here, on startup, there's a little pump underneath here that pumps uh, air, literally from a, a air pump, secondary air valve or whatever, into your your head or some shit. I don't know why. Um, I do, but I can't explain it because I'm more focused on the intake right now. But it has something to do with emissions, supposed to get better gas mileage. To me, it's stupid. Why am I purposely burning oil? I don't want that. So I deleted that and it freed up some vacuum lines as you can see that is just like a five or ten buck part on ecs tuning um ignore the straight pipes but just deleting the secondary air pump freed up so much vacuum lines for me and so much space over here for turbo activities um but that's that's later um I would say the only problem I really had with putting my M50 intake on my M52 TU is the limited amount of vacuum ports on an M50. Um, so on the, I'm only limited to this, this one really big vacuum port on the front. And uh, I think, I really think that's it. Like there's only one intake port. And from that one, I have to, there's a little Y connector. I have to divide that into the brake booster. And these are all just um like fittings. Like that's stock. Um this I bought at AutoZone. This is a Y connector, like a three-fourths Y connector. And this is for if I needed any other um source of vacuum. I just have this here for just for extra. Um but yeah, when it comes to these. You're gonna be using a lot of Y connectors because the limited amount of vacuum ports on this uh, intake. I think, I really think this is my only one. And the only other ones are uh, for the, my idle control valve. And that's about it. Yep, which is my idle control valve port. 
and that's a vacuum line that, that runs up to the fuel rail I can make a more in-depth um what is this I had to buy a m50 throttle throttle um what it boot thing because the m52 tus come with two two ports I don't know if you can see two ports one two I got one plugged and then that one that runs down into a hose back into the idle control valve so that yeah controls my idle but all the other like peripherals that were on the m52 or m54 intake such as the disavow the um like this thing whatever the fuck that thing is like all of the peripherals are gone i just deleted them you like i don't even need the clips anymore that's why i kind of modified the wiring and it looks so ghetto with the duct tape because a lot of the a lot of the accessories for the intake when it comes to power you don't even need it so i just cut it off deleted it and the only cables i really needed are my throttle because this is the stock stock m52 tu throttle bottle throttle body <laughs> connects right up no modifications needed no um adapters i just needed a um a gasket a gasket that i got from m50 uh conversions.com like it's a really really nice let me show you real quick because the stock the stock gaskets are really really skinny uh, because they sit inside the throttles so let me show you so it's supposed to be a little flat gasket that sits up to right here. Um, this is the M50 intake, like from an M50. Or I'm saying the wrong words. M50 throttle from an M50. I got that when I bought the throttle. But pretty much the two gaskets for the two throttle bodies are completely different. So you kind of need like a hybrid custom gasket. And M50 manifoldconversions.com has the best one that I found. I've never had a leak never had a problem um ignore this this is just a ghetto catch can that i'm trying to make with a bud light bottle um this got nothing to do with the intake but i i really think i covered almost everything um without having to pull off the intake and show you everything physically you know what i mean but uh there it is there's my t-fitting there it is so this is pretty much the answer to all your airline problems. T-fittings, man. Fucking T-fittings. Because, like I said, you're only limited to one to one port off the intake. So you better split that bitch up and use it accordingly. Um, yeah, oh, oh, and one final thing. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how do I route the throttle cable? So I pretty much... That bracket right there is an M52TU bracket. And I cut it with an angle grinder to size because it's, even though it looks this long, wait, let me zoom out. It's about uh, this long. So I cut it to size to fit in that area, not intrude in any way. And that, yes, that is a skateboard bearing. A fucking skateboard bearing that I space out the, um, the bracket that I cut down to size to to hold the throttle cable in exactly the right spot. Is it a little ghetto? Yes. Does it work? Yes. So if you're in a pinch and you need to fix it, that's the way to do it. Just make sure that when you tighten down that nut with that spacer, it's extra tight and there is no movement, no play in this bracket whatsoever. It can't go back, can't go forth. Like you see, I have a little bit of play. Um, if there's too much play, your throttle cable will pop out. I remember I didn't have that little rubber around there and my throttle cable popped out. And I was with no throttle for like 10 minutes till I realized what happened. But yeah, this is the ghetto way to do it. Just make sure you have that nut really, really tight, which I'm glad I checked because mine isn't. And you have that little rubber grommet so your throttle cable isn't gonna pop out from the constant pulling of the gas cable back and forth. Um, I don't want you to lose throttle at the wrong time. That would suck. But, and this is how you could tell this is an M50 part. It just says E36 325i. That's that's what car an M50 came in. So that's how you know it's an M50 part. But, um, 
yeah other than that hopefully i went in depth uh this is just a cold air intake nothing crazy um because that joint isn't very strong i have it ghetto zip tied up with a hanger um just so the thing doesn't bang around you know what i mean because if it bangs around too much then the intake can come off and uh nobody likes that it sucks but if you guys need any more information on how i put my m50 intake on my m52 technical update or m54 they're basically the same shit um hopefully i gave you as much information as i can without actually pulling off my intake and that's another thing too like look how much space i got under there like if i have to get underneath the engine now like it's never ever a problem because like i got i got space bro like i can touch things like uh like compared to my M54, it's like what, where, like how you, how you fitting in that? You not. And then another, like how this intake is so big, right? Size comparison wise, this intake is huge, massive. But how does it give me less air than this? Because the runners on the M50 are like twice as big, bro. They're like twice. Like look at my finger. Like I would say about second knuckle. So we're gonna hold the second knuckle and literally twice as big, bro. So they make this intake so big and so wide. Um, pause, pause, but then it's not giving me the same amount of air as this 20 year old plastic intake. Um, I don't know, that's why I don't work for BMW because if I did, I probably get fired because I'm making you guys drive cars with way too much power and destroying the environment and shit. But then that's why I don't work for BMW. Um, I'm getting a little carried away. Hopefully, I gave you as much information as I possibly could about this piece of shit. And I don't even know why I did it. I like a challenge. Um, I know it's definitely challenging, but hopefully I can help you figure it out, too. Uh, yeah. Have a good day, bro. Have a good day.